and welcome back. My name is Sharon and we're going to have another one of our autumn tutorials using just a simple bunch or in this case two bunches of supermarket flowers. Now a few weeks ago you would have seen me create a design in a red bowl almost like a flower pot size container and I'll link it here so if you haven't seen that tutorial you can go back and have a look. And I used two bunches of my local supermarket flowers. So no exotic flowers, nothing too unusual. And what I'm going to do is reuse those same flowers. And I'll show you exactly what they were in just a second. But if you can't remember, it's when I used these amazing orange lilies. I'm going to reuse the same bunch. So they've been cut down short already because I've used them in a previous arrangement. What I'm going to do today is make a different shape arrangement. So this would be long and low, ideal for the centre of a narrower table or the centre of your table at home if you're having an autumn supper. It could be fantastic for Thanksgiving or for a Halloween party. But I'm going to arrange it in a different style just so that you get to see there are different styles of arrangements that you can make with the same selection of flowers. Sometimes I think that if I use a certain set of flowers, it gives the impression that they're the only, that's the only style they can be used in. But what I'm going to do is use this fabulous little basket. This has also come from my local supermarket. So if you're here in the UK, this is from Morrison's. It happens to be the same place as my flowers come from. And it's a local supermarket to me, so that's where I tend to pop in to choose flowers if I'm going to create a supermarket video. I think it's a cutlery container, so it's for your barbecue table, if you're lucky enough to be having a barbecue area. You put your condiments, salt, pepper, what have you, and then your knives and forks in this section, and you can carry them out to your barbecue in area. But I thought it gave me a few different options for arranging flowers in. You could stand your floral foam in the centre here. You could maybe even put a bottle of wine as a gift. You could arrange in small little bottles or containers. So I thought it was something that would be quite versatile, something that I can use maybe several times during the video. But today I'm going to use your ordinary green floral foam. And I've used a plastic tray. So this is a spray tray, or what I refer to as a spray tray, and it will hold up to one block of floral foam. Today I'm just using a small, maybe just less than a third of the foam. If you're arranging this at home, then you don't need to worry about attaching it to your container. You can just sit it on there. But what I will do, just to show you what you would do if you were delivering it to a friend or if you were going to work as a florist, then you would need to consider how you would transport it from your place of work to your customer to your recipient. So I just secured that over the top with an extra piece of tape and that will make sure that it won't fall about. Now it's not perfectly flat, it's not perfectly stable on there, but for a design for the home I think that's, you know, that's fairly adequate. Now my focal flowers are going to be these gorgeous lilies, but I'm going to add these in at the end and that's because they're quite open, they damage fairly easily and I don't want to crease them or cause any bruising to the petals. Now I'm a bit limited with the length of the design that I can create because the flowers have already been cut down short. So we're going to try and get an oval or a rectangular shaped design but who knows what it's going to turn out like. I'm just going to use everything at the length that it was cut for me. It wasn't cut for me, I cut it myself but the length it was cut when I made that round arrangement. And you can see then, you know, how versatile flowers and foliages can be. Now in that mixed supermarket bench, I have this one piece of Pittosporum and it was quite a bunchy stem. And I also had, I've done two arrangements with the supermarket bench. So I've actually got two stems of this Pittosporum, and if you think about this, it's a bunchy foliage, so it has the ability to fill quite a large space. And for a moment, I'm just using it in the length that it was when I took it out of the arrangement to create a bit of an outline shape. I'm trying to make it slightly longer and a bit narrower so that it ends up repeating the shape of that basket. 
and it's going to be a design that's going to be seen from front and back. So if you and I are at a party and we're sitting down for a lovely evening meal, I'm going to be opposite you and you will have something of interest to look at the same as I will and I'm sitting on the opposite side. So that's my plan and I'm limited to the choice of foliage that I have because of course it was the only amount that I had in that supermarket bench. Now that supermarket bench only gave me that one lone white snapdragon and I'm pretty much going to do the same. I'm going to use this in the middle. Um, if I added it to the left or to the right then the colour would be stronger on one side. So I'm trying to make it symmetrical but not perfectly matching on both sides. Now my problem is going to start when I start to use the roses. Because I did a circular design, the roses are going to be fairly similar in length. I'm going to try and find two that are the longest length and I think I can just about manage it. I've gone underneath the handle and I try to get them into the longest position I possibly could have. What I could have done was put in a larger piece of foam at the very beginning and then that would have made the design much bigger. But I didn't then feel I was going to have enough flowers to fill it in in the middle. So that's why I chose a smaller piece of floral foam. And when you're making a design, those are the things that you really need to consider. How many flowers have I got? Have I got big thick stem flowers in which case I might need to have a bigger piece of foam? Or in my case, have I got small stem flowers, so therefore I can get away with a smaller piece of foam. Okay, so we've got uh, quite a good selection of this lovely, almost like a burnt orange rose. And for a moment, I'm just trying to evenly balance it. So if I've got some on the right, I add some to the left. If I've got some on the front, I'm also adding some in to the back as well. I'm not going to make it perfectly matching. Um, I think I might add in a small amount of wheat at the end, dried wheat. It is the autumn and uh, wheat always looks lovely in this type of design. And um, That I think is all my roses. If I just tilt that forward for you to see, you can see just a quite a simple mix. Um, I'm trying to get that orange all throughout the arrangement, the left, the right, the front and the back, bearing in mind that I've left this centre section free to put those quite big lilies in it. And included in that bunch was quite an unusual flower. This is called Carthamus. I love using this in the autumn. It's got a gorgeous sort of shape. It's quite an unusual head. Very, very much like a thistle. It's a really good lasting flower and if you're a keen arranger it will dry and you could spray paint it or put some glitter on it and use it later on in the year. And the stems have already been pre-cut um, off camera just to sort of speed up the process so I am re-cutting the stems every time I put them in and that's how it's coming together. Now if you remember we had the yellow tanacita which is this soft stemmed, very delicate flower. There were two stems of this and this is the length that they were cut. They have a little bit of a tendency to bunch up and cutch in together. I'm Welsh, obviously, and if you haven't heard of the word cutch, it's a good Welsh word that means hugging and holding on to one another. And that's what these stems tend to do. They're soft little round heads all bundle up together and hold on to one another like best friends they don't want to part i'm using the longer ones from that previous arrangement to get rid to the end and then the shorter pieces bring the color yellow up towards the center isn't that lovely real autumnal feel to it and if you were doing flowers for the harvest celebration here in the uk you could even include some dry goods in there, in, in that little square base that I showed you at the beginning. Something that you might be donating to your local charity. You might even want to put some vegetables in there and then do a small arrangement on the side. That's how it's coming together so far. 
I just now got the white of the Tavisitum, so this will help pick up on that one lone white flower in the middle. But because I have this white, this is going to give me a lovely linking colour with the top section. So we'll keep going. I've got to keep remembering to leave that gap there in the centre. But I think that's turned out quite well. And what you now get to see is with that choice of flowers from the local supermarket. So it was one mixed bunch and one bunch of roses. You get quite a lovely, attractive design. And if you've got more foliage than me, then obviously you can add more colour and more texture but you get a good idea of what you can create. Now my final flower is going to be those lilies and I'm just going to give them a nice clean cut on the bottom. They're going to come up towards the centre. It's the bigger flower, it's the more dominant flower, it's my focal flower, so that needs to be in my focal area. This one is really showing colour and the lovely texture of that lily. But it is something that damages quite quickly. Okay, and that now hopefully will totally change the dynamics of the arrangement. We now have a strong visual focal point, somewhere for your eye to rest. We had lots of small flowers, all of the same size, the same shape, so our eye was dotting around the arrangement very rapidly. Now I have somewhere for it to rest and to stop before it rushes off and sees the rest of the flowers in the arrangement. So now we look at putting in some textured material and this is going to be in the form of the wheat and it's really going to help pick up on the colour of the basket at the bottom. So this is what the wheat looks like and I buy this in bunches from my wholesaler but you can often pick this up in mixed bunches from the supermarket or you might even grown and dried some yourself. But what this does, it gives me a lovely linking colour between the top arrangement and the basket itself. I'm going to put them in, in little clusters of maybe three or four just to add some interest in texture and colour. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll put some towards the edge as well to, to help create that longer length because we didn't obviously have a great deal of length in the stems of the roses. So two or three stems on either side. And I don't want it perfectly matching. I don't want that perfect symmetry on either side. For me, it's a country style basket. It's a bit loose, quite natural. I don't want to make it now too formal by placing any material in very severely matching on either side. A few little pieces on its own as well. This is a radial style arranging. So if you've been joining me on our 10 week course, so I've been running an online course and if you want any information about that then you can email me on the address below. So it's SharonDower at Hotmail.com. We've been running a 10 week online course and people have been joining from all over the world. And we've been learning about different styles of arranging, why we arrange in a specific way, all the proportions and the scale of designs. And this is a really good example of something called radial. It's when all the stems radiate from a centre point. And that 10 week course is going to run again very soon. So if you want any information, then please let me know. But isn't that great? Hopefully now we have a link between that top section and the bottom section. So it all becomes one gorgeous design rather than an arrangement sitting on top of a basket. The colours link together really well. And if we think about that colour wheel, which is always behind me, we're sort of this section on the colour wheel. So it's tints, tones and shades of colours that all lie alongside one another on the colour wheel. So I hope you've really enjoyed that tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.